Luca Bizzarini was named for his grandfather. And there's nothing unusual in that. A lot of people are named for their grandfathers. My brother Carl was named for our grandfather. But Giotto Bizzarini's grandfather was also named Giotto after Giotto di Bodone, a legendary Italian painter and architect of the 11th and 12th century. And when your parents give you the name Giotto, I think much is expected of you. I mean, Giotto di Bodone is widely credited with having invented modern painting from the Middle Ages and what we would see come to great flower in the Renaissance. His great masterpiece are the murals in the Scroveni Chapel in Padova, Italy, which are absolutely astonishing. And if that weren't enough, the bell tower of the cathedral in Florence. So the name Giotto means that you are truly an artist. An artist in all forms, aesthetic, functional, and I have to say, I don't know how they knew it, but Giotto Bizzarini's parents named him well. We're driving a 1967 Bizzarini 5300 Strada. Giotto Bizzarini had a brilliant career as an engineer and designer. His specialty were chassis. However, he also knew a thing or two about engines as well. He started out working for Alfa Romeo and worked on the team that did the chassis design for the Giulietta, which, and anybody who's ever experienced the Giulietta knows it's one of the most amazing cars to drive ever built. He left Alfa Romeo and went to work for Ferrari, where he worked on a number of the great variants of the 250, including the 250 GT short wheelbase, and most principally was the main designer on the 250 short wheelbase's successor, the GTO. He left Ferrari along with Carlo Chitti in the famous Palace Revolt in 1962 and joined ATS. And that's also an exciting story because here at the Audrain, of course, with the acquisition of the Nick Begovich collection, we have an ATS and can't wait to bring that driving experience to you. But Giotto Bizzarini was a brilliant man. After ATS failed, then he went out on his own and worked as a freelance consultant designing for Lamborghini, and he was responsible for the architecture of the V12 Lamborghini engine that lasted from 1963 to 2010, and then worked with Piero Rivolta on the Revolta GT and the Isogrifo. From the Isogrifo came this car. Pizzarini wanted to go racing and he devised a racing version of the Grifo for Rivolta, who wasn't really that interested in it, and as a sort of a severance package, got to take his design and build it under his own name. And the Bizzarini 5300 Strada and the Corsa were the results of those. This is a car powered not by an exotic Italian V12, but by a good old American V8. In this case, a 327 Corvette engine, 365 horsepower. And so you think, well, okay, this car is just a Corvette and fancy Italian drag. Not quite. Its front mid-engine, as a matter of fact, there's an access hatch in the top of the dashboard to get to service the back end of the engine. And the driving position is such that I'm wearing my driving shoes in this, my racing driving shoes, because they're really the only appropriate shoes to wear because the pedal box is really small and slightly canted because of the location of the engine. 
but it gives a balance. Remember, Giotto Bizzarini was a chassis guy and he knew how to design a chassis that felt like a racing car. The other thing, of course, that this has over a typical 1967 Corvette 327, 365 is the fact that it weighs a full 375 pounds less. This thing is absolutely amazing to drive. This Borg Warner four-speed gearbox is so incredibly sweet. If the throws were any shorter, the gears would be twinned. This car is such a thrill to drive. <laughs> the seat is a really small alloy bucket covered with the bare minimum of padding and leather. And it just is an amazing place to sit. And of course, this is, I think, an incredibly beautiful car designed by Giorgetto Giugiaro who also penned the Iso Grifo, it has that magical view through this beautifully curved windshield, that beautifully sculpted fender coming up on either side. It's just incredibly romantic. And, and just exactly what you want in a beautiful, sleek, powerful Italian car. The Bizzarini 5300 Strada is a bigger car than you might think it is when you see it in pictures, but it's also a much lower car than you can imagine. It's only about 42 and a half inches tall. When you think about the fact that the Ford GT40 was named for its 40 inch height, it brings it into perspective, since this is, after all, a car for the street. Although, of course, it's also a car for the track and since Vizzarini wanted to go racing, racing he went. And in 1965, the Corsa version of this car won its class at Le Mans and came in ninth overall. Financial troubles uh, and distribution caused Vizzarini to go out of the manufacturing business fairly soon. The last cars were sold only three years after he started the company. So there are only 133 of these cars built. And that brings us to another point about the fact that these cars are not only rare, but they're faked. There are lots of cars pretending to be Bizzarini's because they are so incredibly desirable. But you have to go to a known specialist to find a genuine car as we have here. Our friend Steve Serio, the Bond Group, was the one who found this car for us. And you have to know exactly what you're looking at to make sure you've got the genuine article and not a reproduction. And this is, as the late Carl Haas used to say in his great classical radio program, rare and very well done. One of the uh, great pleasures, of course, of having a hybrid car, hybrid of course in the old-fashioned term of Italian coachwork, chassis, and American power, is the fact that it's not at all a temperamental car. Sure, it really wants to go, but if you're sort of toddling along on a road, it doesn't really mind it the way a V12 might. Clearly, it wants to go, and much like, uh, actually, I think that it, it, it feels more comfortable at lower speeds than a 67 Corvette 327 might. And it's certainly a heck of a lot more solid. A lot of people think of Italian coach-built cars as being sort of flimsily built. This car feels like a rock. Once you're able to get your foot in it, it really comes alive. 
it is absolutely rock solid. It feels as to use another overused uh, term, as if it's hewn from a solid piece of steel. It's just so smooth and, and, and tight, and the handling is absolutely astonishing. You feel that this car could actually turn in its own axis. The weight distribution feels absolutely perfect. It's so incredibly well balanced. You wish that every Corvette could feel like this. And the 67 Corvette is one of my favorite cars. But this <laughs> is a 67 Corvette. If Giotto di Bodone could have had the experience of driving a car, or better yet, creating a car, this is what he would have done. Beautiful to look at as his paintings, as magnificent to behold as his architecture. This is everything. This is absolutely everything. <laughs>